Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are continuing our series about dining at the table of demons, and this is going to be episode 8.2, and this is going to be our second part of our interview with Kevin, who is a missionary to Muslims in Egypt. Now, the reason that this is connected to dining at the table of demons is because when you do nothing, when you are silent, you are aiding the enemy. Your silence is an approval for the enemy to do his job because God has put you in the place that you are at right now so that you can reach the people around you with the message of the gospel. That's the whole point of even existing. What is the meaning of life? To share the gospel with others. This is why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This message of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world, to all nations, and then the end will come. people supposed to believe if nobody preaches to them you've been given access to the gospel it's your job to share with the people who are around you and it's as if so many Christians today they hear the message of the gospel and they say I'm a Christian but they don't actually do anything they're not actually producing any sorts of fruits and when you sit by silent when you don't share the gospel the enemy's definitely going to be able to to capture them when you sit idly by and do nothing you aid the enemy you're not helping god's kingdom at all by just being hearers of the word that's why scripture tells us don't just be hearers of the word be doers also <laughs> you guys you have to actually do the work of the kingdom. And it's not that our works save us. We do good works to show that we're saved. If we truly love Jesus, then what he wants is what I want. If you truly love Jesus, if you truly realize how detrimental, how awful it would be to spend eternity apart from God, you would have a heart for people no matter what the cost is, and you would tell them the message of the gospel. But today we have Christians, they're too busy. They're too busy to share the message of the gospel with others. They don't know what to say. Well, they would know what to say if they actually cracked their Bibles and started learning what scripture says so that they can share it with others. This is why Peter tells us to we always need to be ready to give a testimony for why we have the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. If we don't even know what the word of God says, how can we share our faith with others? And if we don't share our faith with others, how are people supposed to hear the message of the gospel? And if they don't hear the message of the gospel, how are they supposed to be saved? The Holy Spirit has put you in the place that you're in right now to see if you're going to be faithful in what little he's given you. Now, we've already talked about this, how so many people will ask God for more blessings and more blessings and more blessings when they're not even faithful with the little bit that God has given them. And you guys can check that out right up here for everybody on desktop and mobile. And of course, links are always in the description box below. But um, Christians, when you hear the message of the gospel and you don't do anything with it, you're aiding the enemy. You're dining at the table of demons. You are furthering Satan's kingdom. You're not working for God's kingdom. And we know that scripture says you can't dine at the table of demons and dine at the table of the Lord. You can't drink from the cup of demons and drink from the cup of the Lord. So Christians, it's time to practice what you preach. Do you really believe in Jesus? Do you really have a heart for the lost? Because if you do, you're going to start bearing fruits 
in keeping with repentance. So anyway, let's jump into this interview with Kevin, and I would love it if you would like, subscribe, and share. And who needs to hear this message? Think about it, and then send them the link to this video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Being in Egypt was, oh man, it was such a, I don't want to say a breath of fresh air, but you really see what it's like to be a Christian. You really mm -hmm. understand what it means to worship. You really understand what it means to follow God and die to yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Mm -hmm. um, our first experience of worship or at church, um, it wasn't even, literally we were in our apartments and we had to close the doors, shut the blinds, pick up the mattresses from the floor and like put them against the wall. And that was our worship. And we had to do that to prevent our neighbors next door from hearing us worship in the name of Jesus. And my worship that night was just tears because you don't experience that in America. You don't experience that in New York. I'm from New York. You don't experience that here. There's no mm -hmm. type of persecution there, but there, if your neighbors were to even so much literally as possibly hear you lift up the name of Jesus, not only can they call the authorities, but you can be deported quickly. And Does easily. anybody want to remember why Daniel was thrown into the lion's den? Yeah. They heard him praying. Uh, it was his yeah. name that snitched on him yeah. because yeah. nobody was supposed to bow to anybody else oh. but the king. And Daniel's mm. like, mm, I don't care. But he didn't put a mattress against the door. He nope. Still, yep. he's still going to pray. Yep. And um, God did not prevent Daniel from going into the lion's den. But while he was in that den, it was God who shut the mouth of those lions. So he's always mm -hmm. with you through the fire. Kind of yep. like Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. He didn't take them out of the fire. He didn't prevent them from going through that. But he was there with them yeah. through the fire. There were four yeah. people in that furnace. And the fourth person was Jesus. Yeah. Oh, man. So just remember, he's not going to take you out of these situations. He promised us persecution and tribulation, mm -hmm. but he's going to be there with us through the end. He's never going to leave us or, for, or yeah. forsake us. Yeah. And that's, that's something that we really saw firsthand being there because we, not only did we experience like the spiritual oppression, because like I was saying before, when you're in these nations, like you don't, you feel it. Like you literally feel you, feel, you hear the call to prayer five times a day, 10 minutes at a time. Literally the minute it comes on, like you, you, you feel it upon you. Like it's almost as if like it's trying to like grip you. And now you started out by going from New York to South Korea, which is a yeah. Christian nation. Yeah. How did the spiritual feel change between South Korea and then you traveled to Turkey and then to Egypt? What was the difference? Oh, it was a huge difference um, because the air feels so much lighter in South Korea. Um, and so Korea really only got the gospel like 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the the Koreans are so on fire for, for the Lord. Like the, the gospel for them is like, it's literally the only air that they can possibly breathe. And so being in Korea was a breath of fresh air. But the minute you leave and you go to the Middle East, um, like I said, you it's like you, you feel it. Like you, it's almost like it's a smack in the face. And so the minute we came off the plane, it was almost hard to breathe in a way. Um, mm -hmm. And so like if, if you're living there in a nation like that, like it's normal. But if you're filled with the spirit of God, immediately, you know, warfare starts. Like immediately, you know, okay, I'm, I'm literally, I'm not in Kansas anymore. It's you know, boots I, on the ground. Yeah, it's boots on the ground. We're about, we're at war. We're literally at war. And so our first, our first half an hour, like we were, we were literally in prayer because like guys, like we're, we're in a nation where, although it's, it's going to be fun because we're all together. We're in a nation where you will be persecuted for preaching the gospel in public. You know, and right. so it was, it was eye opening. It was humbling. It was a humbling experience because we understood, wow, when you're really here in America, you take everything for, for granted. You take being a Christian here for granted, uh, going to church freely for granted, assembling with saints for granted. And um, when you're there, like there are a lot of things you have to do in secret. Like my, I couldn't go by my original name. Like mm -hmm. I had a local name. You know, so in, in Egypt, my name wasn't Kevin, it was Yusuf. And so whenever I introduced myself, it was, oh, my name is Yusuf. 
you know, which is Joseph. You're right, which is there. right, exactly. And so, and even even using that name, I was able to preach the gospel. And so, one of our friends, his name was Muhammad. Um, and, and mind you, everyone in the Middle East, there, <laughs> if they're a guy, their name is most likely Muhammad or Ahmed. So, if you run into a couple Muhammads, don't be surprised. Like everyone's. I have a friend, and she named her baby Muhammad. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. And, and she's so, Muslim. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's just like a common name for them. And literally I wrote my name cause he was teaching us like a little bit of Arabic. And so I wrote my name Yusuf in English. And he's like, do you know what that name means? And I'm like, yeah, it means Joseph. And he starts telling me the story of Joseph in the Quran. And I'm like, okay. Immediately my friend next to me, my, my, uh, my team, my teammate next to me, I look at him and he, I'm like, you know, I give him the cue. I'm like, start praying because we immediately, we know, okay, this is spiritual warfare. Cause he's telling me, the story that he believes is like really true because he believes the Quran is true. And at, when he's finished, I look at him like, now let me tell you what the Bible says about the story of Joseph. And I started explaining to him about how Joseph was sold to slavery for silver by his brother and how Joseph is a type of Christ and how at the end of the story of Joseph, when, his, when he's finally reunited with his brothers, he looks at his brothers and he says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good for the saving of many. And I'm like, that is the story of Jesus. He was sold literally to be crucified for 30 pieces of silver by his own brothers, by his own disciples. And that through his crucifixion, what he and what they meant for evil, God meant for good for the saving of many. And that Jesus died on that cross for your sins because you're a sinner. But he did not stay dead for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through him. And that all those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I'm like, this is the gospel. And he, we were walking at this point and he was silent for five minutes straight. And so I knew the Holy Spirit was moving. And immediately after five minutes, I, I, know, I, know, I know his gears are turning because he's, he's studying to be a lawyer, right? And so he's in a very intelligent guy, also very young, but the gospel to him, I realized not only had, the, had he never heard it, but he had never heard it preached to him that way. He never right, heard. Yeah. In Islam, you don't read the Bible. No. It says in the Quran that the Bible is true. Yeah. Yet, if yeah. you've ever read, if you've ever read the Quran, and I would suggest everybody go to Quran.com and just mm -hmm. read the first through, I don't know, six surahs. Yeah. It's like the first six chapters, so you can kind of get a feel for what the Quran is like. If you don't know the Bible, you cannot understand the Quran. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It, and, it's madness. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's another thing. You need to know your Bible when you go to these nations because mm -hmm. these Muslims they 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 will know your scripture and they'll twist it. And so, right. what really helped me before was uh, David Wood. You know David, and yeah. so there was I this, know him. He doesn't know me. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and so. David has this video and it's such a good video. It's called the Quranic, the, the Islamic dilemma. And he really explains it so well. And Surah chapter five, ayah 47 says, if, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. And so I brought that up to my friend. I said, well, your Quran tells me I need to judge by what's in my Bible. But you know what's in my Bible? My Bible says that Jesus is the son of God. And not only is the son of God, he is God himself. He's a second person in the, tri in the Trinity. And right. so he's the one who put upon, took upon flesh and died on the cross for your sins. Right. And that was another moment where he just didn't know what to say when I was having a conversation with him. And so not only, not only is it good to know what the Quran has to say about the Bible, but you can use that as a witnessing tool so that you can lead people to scripture and then point them to the gospel, point them to Jesus. And we, me and my teammates, we had opportunities to do that almost all the time. And we literally saw and heard uh, people question, okay, well, at the end of that, at the end of our meeting, he was questioning his faith. He was like, well, you know, I never really like questioned that or I never, I never read the Bible. And he admitted to me, he was like, you know, my aunt is Christian. Uh, my cousins are Christian, um, but I've never read the Bible for myself. And so I told him the next time you meet, I'm going to give you a Bible so that you can read for yourself. So that in you Arabic, can come to assuming, right, right, right. In Arabic so that you can read it for yourself. And like the youth in that nation, they're, they're questioning everything. Like they're questioning the purpose of life and many 
atheists that you meet, and we met a lot of atheists in in the nations. Um, they're most of them are youth, like mm -hmm. they're teens, like they're young, young adults. They're like in their early twenties, early thirties, and they know Islam is false. But because they're in a nation where if you even so much as question your faith, question Islam, not only could you be ostracized, um, you can be killed. Or should I say, for most part, they'd much rather be killed than be ostracized. Because if you're forsaken, left, you know, completely abandoned by your family and friends, you know, it's worse than is worse than death. Because mm -hmm. the culture is so strong, and their family units are so strong and so tight knit that, you know. Becoming a Christian, losing your family and your friends is the worst thing that possibly happened to you. Um, but they're questioning. They're, they're questioning their faith and they know Islam is false. But because people are not going to nations like that to preach the gospel, they don't hear it. They don't hear it. Right. Well, you know, the reason that they know it's false is because there's no power. And First yeah. Corinthians 4.20 tells us, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, yeah. but in power. Yeah. And yeah. the Holy Spirit, when he moves through us, that is powerful. Remember Acts 14, it was Paul and Barnabas. Mm. And they were in Lystra. Yeah. And it says, now at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking and Paul looked intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw that Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lycanian, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priests of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. Yeah. That's how powerful yeah. the movement of the Holy Spirit is through people where they mm -hmm. think these are the gods yeah. on Olympus come yeah. down in human form that they wanted to sacrifice to them. Yeah. And we don't see that kind of movement in the yeah. body of Christ today because they've become lukewarm. Yeah. They've fallen asleep yeah. and it's the power of God that moves people. It's mm -hmm. not us that brings people to the gospel. Yeah. One plants another waters, but it's yeah. God who brings the increase. And yeah. that's why we have to be walking in the Holy spirit at yeah. all times. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's funny you say that because, Right before that, the chapter right before that, chapter 13, mm -hmm. when they're sent off, Barnabas and Saul are sent off to Cyprus. It says, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. Like you can't, you cannot go anywhere. You cannot do anything unless you're really filled with the Holy Spirit and you're sent by the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes we really forget, we get so excited about the gospel. What you want to do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we get so excited about doing, you know, doing good videos for YouTube, getting the message of the gospel out, or going, actually going to the nations, making sure the gospel is being preached, that we don't even sit down and check whether or not we're being led or sent by the Holy Spirit. We think we are, we think because we have the idea that it's okay. But there are many times you read in the book of Acts where the Holy Spirit refused Paul and Silas or anyone to do or go anywhere. I know people get mad that I don't do as many videos anymore, but yeah. to me, it's like, I'm only going to put out a video if the Holy Spirit leads me to say something. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just talking in mm -hmm. the wind. Yeah. But we need to remember, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, says yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's not the will of men that we're doing these things. It's not by my will. It's God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's why yeah. we need to always yeah. be plugged in. And I know that sounds new agey, but you need to be 
at least cognizant of the voice of the Holy Spirit so that you know his will. If you don't know his word, you won't know his voice. And if you don't know his voice, you won't know his will for your life. And you're going to be walking in your flesh instead Uh of walking in the spirit. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly how God has called us to live and walk this walk, especially in the times that we're living in. I mean, there's no way you can do anything without literally being filled and also being led by the Holy spirit. And I don't, I, sometimes I really just don't get, um, how Christians could do or say anything and assume that it's the Holy spirit when really it's just their flesh, you know? Right. So it's, uh, so being there literally, (laughs) if you were not sent by the Holy spirit, you would know very quickly in the nations, you would know extremely quickly. Um, because, there's there's something about the Middle East like they they can sense whether or not you're fake or true. It's it's almost like right. a it's 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 almost scary sometimes how quickly they can figure out whether or not uh, you're an authentic person or you're an inauthentic person. Mm-hmm. And uh, we interpreted that, discerned from that that wow, they these people really can sense whether or not um, we're filled with the Holy Spirit or not. And mm-hmm you really figure you really sense that when you're in the when you're in the nations when you're places like turkey or afghanistan or egypt and there are some of us that were sent in so many different directions um being sent to egypt egyptians are they're very hospitable they're very kind and friendly but they can sense someone who's fake like immediately and so when we're when we're outside meeting people preaching the gospel talking to them um we had to be led about who to talk to when to talk to them um, mm-hmm. whether or not we should like bring them to the corner and like really preach to them. And so as a guy, you can't preach to a woman, you can't preach to a female. And so well, and you're still a foreigner. Yeah, like exactly. Even if you're a man, even if you're not white, you're still a foreigner uh-huh. in this country and they know this. Uh-huh. And that's why you have to be led because unlike the girl who just f- speaks freely in the mosque, this isn't your culture. No. This isn't your no. country. Yeah. And that's why you have to be cognizant of yeah. their, their culture and their societal norms. Right. And we, we, it's so good you said that because we realized that almost immediately because we went there very excited. We're like, wow, yeah, we're here and preach the gospel. But we're like, no, we're, this isn't our nation. This isn't our land. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Acts 17 came to life. You know, and what Paul says, you know, God has enabled you to be born to places that you were born in specifically so that you can search for him so that, um, you can find him for he's not far from any one of us. And that really, it really came to life specifically for me because I realized, wow, God allows us to be born in the areas and the places that we're born in so that we can not just reflect to our own people, but we're able to speak our own language. We're able mm-hmm. to really, um, uh, really understand one another because no one can understand an American better than an American. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just true. And the same way in Egypt, no one can understand an Egyptian better than an Egyptian. And mm-hmm. so we have to go there and we have to like learn to learn to speak the language. But they and are it's already, already Arabic. It's yeah, Egyptian it's Arabic. Egyptian Arabic. And so which is another thing people I realize people don't quite understand. Arabic is not just Arabic. Like right. different nations like Arabic in Saudi Arabia is very different from Arabic in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And so um like there might be some standard words, but there are words that like someone in Saudi Arabia will not understand really in Egypt. And there are words in Egyptian that people in Saudi Arabia won't understand. So um, when we were there, like we had to learn the language, but there, they, they already know Egyptian. And so there's no, that they didn't already know Egyptian Arabic. So there's no one else who could really preach to an Egyptian better than an Egyptian. Right. And so there are many times where, the Holy Spirit really ministered to me specifically. I'm like, you're here to strengthen them. You're here to strengthen your brothers and sisters in the church here. You're not here to necessarily start your own ministry, to do your own thing. You're mm-hmm. here to strengthen your brothers and sisters so that they can go out and preach the gospel. And so when we saw from those new eyes, we're like, oh my gosh, like it takes so much work and burden off of us because Acts 7, like I said, the Bible, when you're there, it comes, it just comes to life. There's no other way I can say it. It just comes to life. You really experience um, scripture in a whole new way. Uh, literally going out to the streets, the Luke 10 ministry, like take nothing but, take nothing but the things that Jesus tells you to take. Like you're literally living day by day, led by the spirit of God. Right. And 
Um, you can't worry about I would, those. I would really say like, yeah. Sorry, First Corinthians nine seven says, "Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk?" Like, don't worry like about not taking a bag yeah. or sandals or clothes. Like, God's yeah. gonna take care of it mm -hmm. if you are faithful. He is faithful. Absolutely, absolutely. And so it's like, you you go out every day and. Literally, you're, you're trusting the Holy Spirit that he will lead you to the right person, that he will lead you to the right person to talk to. And it really, you really understand the concept of kingdom principles when you're preaching the gospel, especially like Paul mentioning about, you know, being a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's really what you are when you're preaching the gospel. You have one vision, one mission, and that is to preach the gospel with all your heart. That's the only thing on your mind when you're there is I'm here to preach the gospel to as many people as I possibly can. I want you to speak on that a little bit more because you have a background in yeah. the military. And I know that so many Christians today are soft. <sighs> they are so soft. And I was talking to one of my friends that I met at the Dallas meetup. But she was saying people in the church, they don't put on the full armor of God because they don't have the belt of truth girded uh, around their loins. They have a soft belly because they don't want to hear the truth. And that's what yeah. the loins are. It's not just your privates. It's that whole area. Mm -hmm. And we can't be soft bellied Christians. Yeah. That's how you die. And yeah. um, a lot of people, they don't want to hear the hard truths because it's offensive. The word of God is offensive to people. Yeah. But. When you're a soldier, so when you entered basic training, were they kind and loving? And I just want to make you feel supported <laughs> today. And like, I just want to help you to better understand why you're here. Like, how was that? Oh, yeah. They were so, man, they were so, so nice at basic training. It wasn't even funny. Like, they gave us like <laughs> food on a platter on a golden plate. Like, they spoon fed us. It was the most, no, heck no. They did not, <laughs> they did none of the sort. You, the minute you come off that bus, uh, all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you're like you not home anymore. Mommy's not going to clean up after you. Mommy's not going to cook you dinner. Mom's not going to do your laundry. Like this, welcome to basic. Like welcome mm -hmm. to real life. And y they literally immediately want you to come out of this concept and this mindset of you're a civilian. You're 100% you're free. You can do what you want. You can say what you want, do what you want, do what you please. Like, no, you, you're you not following orders. Like, mm -hmm. you you have one mindset, and that is to listen to your commanding officer. That's commit to listen to your drill sergeant. Listen to your senior drill sergeant. You know, listen to your commanding that your commander that's there in the in the base. You're, 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 you're only meant to do one thing, and that is to obey. And that's exactly what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He's in verse 4. He's like, no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, mm -hmm. since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. And as a soldier literally in the army of the war an army of the world you only have one perspective and that is your commanding officer the person who brought you there at basic the person who's above you and that is whatever he says goes that's, right. that's literally the only thing that matters whatever he says goes he says jump you jump you don't even ask how high you just jump you right. know and so that's the mindset that we are supposed to have in the military now if that's the world's army imagine what god's army is like we serve a God of the universe. He's the creator of all things. There's no one like him. That's, ex that's exactly what he says in the book of Isaiah. I'm God, there's none like me. You know, I am the Lord, there is no one before me. And this is the same God who sent us his son. And this is the mm -hmm. same God who loved us enough to send us his son so that we can have eternal life. And Paul's like, listen, you're a good soldier of that son. You're a good soldier of the right. Lord Jesus Christ. And he's like, you're, your only pursuit right now is that you're, you're not a civilian in the world. You do not live as the world does. The world's pursuits are not your own. The values of the world's are not your own. You literally have the values of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the only pursuit that you're after, the only vision that you want to see, and the only mission that you will literally put on the whole armor of God to go out into the battlefield and war for. And you war from the perspective of knowing, hey, the battle's already been won. Right. You know, and so you put on the whole armor of God. You put on the, this armor of light that Paul talks about in the book of Romans where you really understand, wow, this armor, this armor of God, and it's funny, it's called the armor of God. It's not my armor. It's it's God's armor. 
that he right. tells me that I need to put on. I need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. I need to put on the helmet of salvation. I need to make sure I pick up the sword of the spirit. I need to pick, make sure I pick up the shield of faith. The breastplate sure the of righteousness. And the right. shoes for the readiness given by the gospel of peace. You got to be ready to give a response for the reason that you have the hope that you have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, it says, and, and praying in the spirit at all times. All times. With all prayers oh, man. Of we can, I can talk about that for days. I mean, there would be days where we knew for a fact, listen, like, are you guys praying in the spirit? Like, who's not praying in the spirit? You can you can immediately pick up who is and who isn't by attitude, by um, moods. Like, you get mood swings very quickly when you're there especially if you're not praying in the spirit and we, we we tend to forget that we just look at the armor and we forget the the immediate verse right after it says praying at all times in the spirit right like you you cannot do ministry in these nations or anywhere for that matter without praying in the spirit like you need to be filled with the holy spirit you need to be making sure you're god's praying. directing you you can't right. do anything because no. john 15 5 says I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. You will not succeed in your mission if you're not led by God. Because it's mm. ultimately his mission. So if you're not directed by him, it, it's it's going to be a waste of time. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's like when you understand being a child of God, is one of the most important identities that you have being in places like that doing things for the for the kingdom of god mm. it it doesn't become easier but it's your strength literally right. when you know who you are in god you know who you are in christ that you are more than an overcomer it helps you especially it helped us when we were there um because we really understood if you don't know who you are um places like this will eat you alive right and if you do not have on the full armor of God, if you do not pray in the spirit, you will literally feel the oppression of uh, of the spirit of Islam every single day, every single day. And so the armor of God made more sense when we were there than I think it made sense here. Because here we just think, oh, yeah, I put on the whole armor of God. Yeah, I'm praying. Yeah, I'm okay. And, you know, I'm being oppressed by my neighbor who, you know, he doesn't believe in God and he makes fun of me or, like, your coworker makes fun of you because, you know, you're right. a Christian. Like, no, guys, that's not that's persecution. Not like, like, shut up. Like, that's not <laughs> this is the difference between yeah. civilian struggles yeah. and soldier struggles. Yeah. 